Hey guys, this is Karan here. I live in Saudi Arabia, studying 10th grade in Yambu International School. So today our uh, topic is about living thing and non-living thing. So how do you differentiate a living object uh, and non-living object if you have no idea of what the object is, okay? <clears throat> so to understand this section, we must un first understand what term living thing includes. Okay, so total, there are five aspects of and if that object doesn't fulfill that five aspects, it's not a living thing. Okay, as you guys can see, I've written down five numerals. Now, let's go ahead and talk about it. So, the first thing, it should be able to reproduce. Okay. The second thing, it should have respond. Respond to the environment. Okay, third is should be made made of cells. Fourth is grow and develop. The fifth is obtain and use energy. Okay. Now here, I'll just wrote down the five aspects. Now what we'll do is basically talk about each and every aspects of it, okay? So le let me give you some time to take a look at the certain as aspects we are looking about. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about reprodu uh, reproduction, okay? So our first criteria is reproduce, okay? Now living thing, you need to reproduce because if they don't soon they will go extinct okay now it turns out that different types of reproduction are divided into two distinct groups the first group is called um let's write it down and see the first group is called asexual the second group is called sexual reproduction Okay, now let's talk about asexual reproduction first. Okay, so let me go ahead and write it down. We'll be talking about asexual. Okay, so in asexual reproduction is where one organism is a parent of one or more or one or more uh, organisms. The easy way to remember this is by thinking about splitting into two. Okay, as there is only one parent, the offspring is identical to the parent. Now, some of the example of this, um, this whole aspect, okay, this whole distinct group is, uh, let me give you some example, bacteria, protists, fungi, okay. This is asexual reproduction. Now let's talk about sexual reproduction. And the main key is splitting into two. Okay, so you have to remember that one. Sexual reproduction. Let's go ahead and talk about sexual reproduction. Now, where two organisms of same species each donate one cell, one cell, each have to donate one cell. The two donated cell combine, okay, one from each parent, okay, one from this guy, one from this girl, each donate one cell and <clears throat> the cell combine. In other words, which it fertilizes, which produces the offspring, okay. Now, the example for this is humans. monkeys the list goes on there's so many things but to summarize it up and other mammals okay now now what we will do since we already uh, understood 
the first criteria, let's go ahead and talk about the second criteria. Okay, so here we come on to the second aspect of the living thing or non-living thing, okay? So, <clears throat> every organism is in constant contact with its environment. And right now, I'm in contact with my environment. For example, air, temperature, water, weather, land, and other organisms, okay? I need friends to be around with in my environment, so do you. Then I need air to breathe. Okay, so I need that. The temperature, okay, there must be some temperature in this room. Okay, so I need water to live. Weather, there's the climate weather. Then there's the land so I can stand upon. Okay, so the environment varies, but the best thing is how I respond to the environment. Okay, because if you see non-living thing such as rock, we already know not rock is a non-living thing okay even if you put that rock in deep refrigerator nothing will happen to it okay but if you put uh, you can't really put a person into a refrigerator what he will try to do is he will shiver okay and stuff like that so there's a response to the environment and that response includes two things that is stimuli and respond now I'll talk about that Stimulus and then respond. Notice the order I write these things. Okay, it's not it's not however you want to write it. It's just this way you can write it. Okay. Now what stimulus and respond? Let me give you guys an example. If somewhere, um, if I uh, went outside, played some sport for hour and two, I'll be sweating, right? So. Since I played the sport, which is a stimulus, the response of my body is I sweat, okay? So when the environment changes and causes the organism to respond, that the change, that change is called stimulus, okay? So many mammals, <clears throat> many animals like birds and mammals, including humans, survive in variety of different environments. Such ability is called homeostasis. Okay, so that's the next thing we were talking about is homeostasis. Homeostasis. Okay, so what exactly is, is homeostasis? Okay, so like, like I said, many animals like birds and mammals, including humans, survive in variety of environments. Some people live in ice, some people live in desert areas, some people live in uh, rainy season kind of areas where it, it rains a lot. Uh, some people are used to hot climates, some people are used to cold weather, some people are used to snow. Okay, so you, as you can see there is <coughs> varieties of range we live in. So, since we live in variety of range, um, temperature, um, our body responds to that certain temperature, okay? So if you were the guy who lives in cold climate for all, all of your life and you come to visit a desert area, you get sweat a lot and lot. You won't be comfortable in that climate because you're more used to the cold temperature, right? So, but you can survive though because our body is known to be, the ability that we have is known to be a homeostasis homeostasis okay the ability of an organism now let's go ahead and look at the actual definition so the ability and of an organism to keep its internal conditions stable and suitable for life is called homeostasis okay so now let's go ahead and look at our third aspect after we are done with the second Okay, so here we come to our third aspect, which is made up of cells. Well, they're not just one type of cells. Well, basically we talked about in chapter one that there is unicellular organism. Let's write it down. Okay, so the bullet point I'm going to write unicellular. Then the second is multicellular. So what's the difference between unicellular and multicellular? Well, 
The difference basically is that unicellular, uni means one, okay? Uni means one. So this kind of organisms contains only one cell, which does all of the function that multicellular does, okay? But it, it's beneficial to have multicellular. Human beings, for example, are multicellular, okay? More than one, okay? So let me give you an example. The, in unicellular, you have bacteria, okay, bacteria. Then the next example would be protists. Third one would be fungi. Okay, now the example for this one would be humans, of course. The second example would be um, <clears throat> any kind of mammals, birds, let's say. Then, let's say monkey. Animal. Everything is consistent of multicellular. So, we do so many functions each day. Our body is working 24-7. Okay? Now, every cell is in is working day and night to produce of what we get okay they're either digesting a food taking out the food from our body as a waste product and so on okay so they're all doing something which is why you living things are made up of cells okay that is the main reason why we need cells to make our body working now let's go ahead and talk about the fourth aspect of the living thing versus non-living thing. Okay, so the fourth and fifth aspect in this video we'll be talking about uh, kind of depends on each other. Okay, so if you see it by the title of it, grow and develop, and the fifth one is up, obtain and use the energy. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the fifth one first to make the fourth aspect more clear. Okay, so the fifth one is obtain and use energy, right? So here, I'll be naming um, you, basically you get energy from some kind of resources, okay? So you, you, you get energy, okay? You, let's say you eat a food, you eat foods, okay? It could be anything. And when, it, when the digestion is um, done, you get energy. So you can go around and play, okay? The example for this would be, uh, after this process is done, you can play, you can jog. Then uh, you can run, you can walk, you can talk and so on okay so you can do whatever you want after the energy is being produced like for myself I can make this video because I have ate my breakfast okay so I have energy to talk with you guys in front of the camera okay so if you obtain and use the energy okay so this what basically does is grow and develop okay if you eat substances it after a while like a year you get a bur um, each and every birthday, you grow one ear, right? From 15 to 16, from 17 to 18, from 19 to 20, and so on. So, basically, grow and develop is kind of the thing that if uh, you're doing a living thing contains, like for human beings, what happens is when you compare your past with right now, you might see yourself as a small baby, but now you're so big that your height is maybe six foot, uh, five foot seven, okay, and so on. So this grow is what we understand and develop is basically what the organisms inside our body also develop, uh, also grow inside us as we develop, as we grow, okay, that's basically it. Now the thing, the last thing I want to point out in this video 
is about obtain and use energy, okay? So let me just raise this out and tell you one of the most important aspects of this um, point, okay? So this point is metabolism. Okay, because I mentioned the word digestion, you need to know what metabolism is. Now, a term that used to obtain and use energy is called metabolism. Okay, that's basically the definition for metabolism is what. Okay, and there are some plants that make their own food. Okay, plants make their own food, and by something called photo. Synthesis. Okay, now this is something which we'll discuss in our next uh, video. Okay, so plant uses sunlight to make energy so they can survive, they can grow and develop. Okay, now they're also known to be autotrophs. Okay, which basically means that they make their own food. Okay, so in this video, I basically explain what's the difference between living thing and non-living thing. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take a take time to subscribe me on my channel. It really helps me out. Please do share my videos with your friends and family.